Hi, thanks for joining us today. If this ministry has impacted your life, we want to hear about it. You can send us your story at amen at vnchurch.com. Also, we would love if you would partner with us financially. You can go to vnchurch.com and click the Give Online or text your donation amount to 757-230-2110. Everybody. Good to see you today. Welcome online if you're joining us. We are officially kind of launching our Christmas season. It's Advent, which means we kind of prepare our minds, our hearts for Christmas, thinking about what God did by sending His Son, Jesus Christ. Uh, amazing, amazing thing. So we're just kind of doing that and, and thinking of the term joy. We'll be doing that over these next several weeks as we prepare ourselves for Christmas because God does have a message of joy. But you know, joy can sometimes be somewhat elusive. You know, we're going to, what is joy? How do we even get it? It's really more than just emotion, as we see in the Bible. I mean, we know what it is to be happy, but what is it to have joy? Now, certainly we know what joy is not, right? Here would be, in my mind, when I think of somebody who has no joy, this is who I think of, right here. Okay? <laughs> Now, you might agree with me, right? The Grinch. He's kind of the stereotypical guy that's lacking some joy. But the problem is, sometimes when we're thinking of joy, we know what it's not, but then we like swing on a pendulum to the other extreme and think of joy kind of like maybe almost like phony, something where it's a plastic smile on somebody, maybe like this, this is who I think of, right? <laughs> He's kind of phony. That's, in fact, I bet if I were to survey this group here and say, hey, if you saw yourself more like Grinch or SpongeBob, you know, who would it be? I, I would imagine a number of you would say, more like Grinch, mainly because you just, you're authentic. You're not all that happy, but at least you're authentic about it, you know? I mean, and, and so there's that concept of, you know, what is joy? Now listen, joy, just kind of right up front, let me say joy is knowing about God's love and his purpose for you despite the circumstances you're going through. No matter what you're going through, you know. No matter, no matter what can be taken from you, because, you know, things can be taken of us. If we link our joy to that, when that goes, our joy goes. Joy is something bigger than that, something grander. And that's certainly part of the Christmas message, so we're going to talk about that, you know, getting genuine joy in our lives. Notice this verse right at the beginning. 1 Thessalonians 5.16. Now, memorizing the Bible is good. I don't know if you've memorized a lot of scripture, but if you haven't, it's a great place to start memorizing verses that only have like three words, right? I mean, it sounds great, right? Hey, I just memorized a Bible verse. Well, let's do that right now. We'll memorize this verse, 1 Thessalonians 5.16. Ready? Let's say it out loud. Always be joyful. Bam! You got it. Feels kind of good. Yeah, I know another verse. I knew Jesus what? Now I know this one. Actually, Jesus wept is the shortest verse in the Bible, only two words. It'd be kind of almost nice if this one was only two words, right? It'd be a little easier. Just, just, just bag always, be joyful. But that's not what it says. And, and it'd almost be easier, not just for memory purposes, but to live it out. Yeah, okay, I'll be joyful. But not in the circumstance I'm in today. But the Bible says, always be joyful. How's that even possible? Come on. 
How's that even possible? Well, obviously, it's not connected to your circumstances because if it was, you couldn't do that. God would be saying, do something you can't do. No, he's not saying that. He's saying, I want you to always be joyful because there is an authentic joy that God gives that really the world doesn't underget. They don't get it. They don't understand it. And God says, I want this for you. Now, in the first Christmas that happened 2,000 years ago, it wasn't all better. It wasn't all roses then. They had turbulent times. They had challenges. And yet they discovered joy. I mean, you had the shepherds and the wise men Jesus and, I mean, uh, Joseph and, and Mary, and of course, Jesus was the baby, and all of those things, there was a lot of turmoil, a very, you know, during that time, and yet they experienced joy, and we can too. That's why the Bible says it was written for us, for our benefit. Notice this next verse up there. It says, everything written in the scriptures was written, why? To teach us, in order that we might have hope, that's kind of cool, circle that, hope, through the patience and encouragement, circle that, encouragement with the scriptures give. So he says the Bible was written of stories about what they went through because we actually go through similar stuff. And so we can walk away with hope. We can walk away encouraged. We can walk away with joy. Now, that first Christmas, that was big news. Now, it was good news, but it was big news. I mean, all these things that are happening with angels and a virgin being, you know, giving birth to a, to a baby who's Messiah. I mean, this is all pretty big news. Today, that would, you know, on the internet, you, have you ever thought what that would be like if to see some of those clicks? I mean, you know, everybody's wanting you to click on their link, right? Their blog, because then their ratings go up. So I was thinking this week, what would, it, what would be some of the clickbait that would be said about the Christmas story if it happened Today, here's what I think it would say, things like this. My baby is here to save the world. I'm a virgin. And eight other crazy quotes from a lady who just gave birth in a barn. Wouldn't you click on that? It's kind of like, I don't know, but let's, let's check it out. Here's another one. A surprise royal baby. You've got to throw royal in there, you know. I mean, if they're going to just think it's Meghan Merkel for a second. You'll get half a million just that right there, you know. Three ridiculous gifts to give at your next baby shower. <laughs> if you're looking for ideas, here's one. What these shepherds did will shock you. Everybody's always wondering, what do these shepherds do, man? I mean, what's up with that? This will shock you. And then here's one. Who's the daddy? Woman claims God. Fiance says, it's not mine. <laughs> I think I, I would probably click on some of that. I'm kind of gullible in those ways, you know. So in that mindset of internet, what would cause you, what do we need to do to click in order for it to not, not just be uh, an empty blog, but actually lead us to joy? What do we click so that it, the follow through leads us to authentic joy that God wants to give us? Well, I want to share with you five shocking truths about joy. Now, they really are shocking because it wouldn't be the way we would think we would get it. Okay, it's not like, oh yeah, well that makes sense. It's kind of almost like, counterintuitive. Here they are, number one. And we learn these from the story of the first Christmas. First one, we learn the first one from the shepherds. First shocking truth is joy is here. Joy is here. Now here I'm talking about, right here, I have this sign. You, everybody's familiar with this, right? The little dot. You see this on your GPS. And so when you're going somewhere, it begins with where you're at. So it says, you know, you know, you're here. You might see this in a mall. This little dot. Joy is here. You see, the problem is we tend to think joy is elusive. It's somewhere else. I've got, I don't have joy. I need to go there to get it. Maybe if I had a better job. Maybe if I got a promotion. Maybe if I won the lottery. Whatever. I mean, we just, I need to go out there to get it. I, a lot of us get sucked into even thinking, if I just go on vacation, I can have two weeks of joy. Here's the problem with that. The, when you go on vacation, the biggest obstacle for you experiencing joy went with you. And that's you. You're the problem. You're the reason. So going somewhere doesn't help. Joy is here. Now, the shepherds, they figured that out. You know, they've got this... Not overly high adrenaline job. I mean, just shepherds pretty, pretty laid back, right? Pretty laid back. And, and, and in fact, 
the encounter where they have with this angel happens at night. So it's even more lonely. It's kind of like nothing's happening. These little blobs of fur, white fur, you got to guard that. And, and it comes right to where they're at. Luke 2 says, that night there were shepherds staying in the fields nearby. This is nearby where Jesus was born, guarding their flocks of sheep. Suddenly an angel of the Lord appeared among them and the radiance of the Lord's glory surrounded them. Wow. Boring, routine job, humdum life, nothing big. All of a sudden, boom, things change. Wow, look at this right here. Joy happened. They didn't have to go somewhere. God brought it right into their life, right into their everyday life. Now I want to look at a couple of favorite words I actually have here. Suddenly, suddenly, see that word suddenly, an angel of the Lord appeared among them. Circle that word suddenly. Suddenly, God shows up. Now, we get the whole thing of suddenly news happens, but generally it's not good, right? If you, you know, think of, oh yeah, well, in the middle of the night, the phone rang. How often is it something good, right? All of a sudden you hear about the diagnosis, the auto accident. What I mean, just suddenly our life gets turned upside down and it's for the bad. But here's the thing. It can be just as sudden for the good. You can discover, you can just be like the shepherd, just going through life and suddenly discover God's love for you. All of a sudden you get it. And it fills your life with hope, with a sense of peace, with joy. It's sudden. All of a sudden, you just kind of wake up. Something, a, a, a flip, a switch flips in your mind. And you go, I, I get it. God's here for me. He cares about me. And it changes everything. It changes our relationships. It changes our approach to life. It changes the way we interact at work. I mean, it just starts to have this ripple effect everywhere. Suddenly, it can happen. It can, it can change everything. So that's the first shocking truth, is it happens right here, right now. Secondly, the second shocking truth, we discover from the angels, from the angels. Now, and it's that joy is sent. This is an angel from our house. We have lots of angels. Sharon loves angels. She has statues, figures everywhere. There's, you go, and then at Christmas, like our, our angel, uh, just our angel, uh, our grouping population, like doubles. <laughs> like, wow, that's why this one's dressed like Santa. So this angel, but you know why we like angels so much in our house is angels remind us that there's, there's something bigger. There, angels actually are true. Angels... Or they don't just fly around like just, you know, looking to tune people's harps or something. I mean, no, the angels, they have a mission. Their mission, they're on mission to help minister to you, to guide you, to protect you, to give messages of hope to you, uh, to intercede for you. I mean, their angels play a vital role in, our, in the spiritual realm that we're tied into. And so joy is brought from the heavens. Here we see it's not something that you go trying to discover, but God brings it. Many people spend their whole lives trying to discover something that God already sent, and it's his joy. So here we see the angels coming in Luke 2. says they, that's the shepherds, were terrified, but the angel reassured them, don't be afraid. He said, I bring you good news that will bring great joy to all people. The Savior, yes, the Messiah, the Lord, has been born today in Bethlehem, the city of David, and you will recognize him by this sign. You will find a baby wrapped snugly in strips of cloth, lying in a manger. How do I get joy? Well, you know, people want joy. They want that in their lives, and so they come up with strategies. Some people just work real hard. If I work real hard, maybe... I'll discover joy. Maybe that will result in joy coming. But if that's true, then the workaholics would be the most joyful people, right? And they're not. We all know that. Some people think, well, you know, the world is such a bad, ugly place. If I just ignore, I'll turn off the news. I'll just ignore. I'm going to go into my own secluded area. I, that will bring me joy. But the world is ugly. There is a lot of bad stuff, but real joy means even in the realities of life, 
you can experience joy. Somebody who just disconnects, they're just blissfully unaware. Other people think, well, maybe joy is just, you know, uh, just happens one in a million. You just got to be lucky, like winning the lottery. You win the lottery, you're joyful. But hey, listen, there's a lot of people, we have, most states have the lottery, right? We read about the lottery winners, not too many of them are happy, right? They end up with all kinds of problems. They have like less joy after they win all of their, 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 their monies. So how do we get Joy, if we can't get it that way. Well, the Bible says that God sends it to us. It's one of his gifts. He brings us that. And so we receive it. We receive the joy just like the shepherds did. He sent it to them. He goes, I bring good news of great, or, or, or good news of great joy for all people. You know the difference between good news and great joy? Well, good news would be like if you won a million dollars. And you came up and you told me, you go, hey, Andy, I won a million dollars. I'd say, wow, that is good news. But if I get an email that says, Andy, you just won a million dollars, that's great joy. Right? I mean, it's, why? Because it's personal. I'm glad for you, but when it happens to me, it's just like, whoa, things are getting down now, man. Great joy. And that's the Christmas message. You see, the Christmas message is good news, but it becomes great joy in your life when you discover it's personal. When you realize God sent his son, Jesus Christ, for you. For you. I mean, for the whole world, but for you. And when you realize that, it changes the game. You think, oh, wow. This is remarkable. God loves me so much. This is part of what we try to communicate when we teach growth track as we say God's got a purpose for you and that purpose as you start to discover your gifts and you get a, that alignment with your mission and as you start to live that way you start to have, be filled with joy there's nothing better than living out your God-given purpose that's why we offer step one that'll be after this service if you haven't done that I encourage you to come and be part of it Sharon and I teach it we'd love to talk to you about God's purpose for your life and we believe that that follows, what follows when we discover that is, is, is joy, great joy. Now notice what the shepherds do after this experience, okay? They do what the shepherd, what the angels told them to do. It says, after seeing him, the shepherds told everyone what had happened. Whoops. And what the angel had said to them about this child, all who heard the shepherd's story were astonished. So they go and they tell people. They tell people, they, they, they experience the great joy, and then they go tell others, joy is like that. You can't just take joy for yourself. It doesn't work like that. Not God's joy, and, and you can't put it in a bottle and put a cork on it. It spoils. It sours. Joy, God's joy continues to replenish as we give it away, as we pour it out on other people. One of the ways we do that is by inviting people to hear about the goodness. And at Christmas season, I mean, people are, it's in the malls, there's songs, everywhere. people are talking about it. It's easier to invite somebody to church during the Christmas holidays than probably any other time during the year. And so you can be inviting people, telling them about the good news of great joy. Now, this is the angels, uh, how the angel we learned from the first Christmas leads us to joy. And of course, we had the shepherds. The next thing is we have the wise men. The wise men, we discover that joy is a journey. Joy is a journey. If you see somebody with a stick like this, you know they're on a walk, all right? They're on a long walk. They're, back in the day, they used to call this a staff, right? But it's a walking stick. And the wise men, they had to journey. They were out east, you know their story, and they saw a star, and then they follow the star. Now, the, the, it seems that it takes them months and months, maybe even over a year. could be up to two years. And so I know in the movies, the wise men are always on camels. But listen, if it took them that long, uh, they either had a really sick camel or they walked it, right? It was a journey. They're on a journey. And when they get, so they see a star, they leave the east, they go and after several months, uh, they go to Jerusalem, and then they work their way into Bethlehem, and the star leads them there. And when it hovers over where the Christ child is, notice what it says. 
It says right here, when they saw the star, they were filled with joy. Now that joy wasn't referred to when they saw the star at first. It doesn't say they had joy. It was a journey in the process as at the other end of that journey. See, they realized, hey, they knew God was with them. They were drawing them to something, but joy would happen at the end. You know, when we're in a difficult time, we don't always have joy, right? I mean, when, there's, when, there's, when something terrible happens, some of you this Thanksgiving, you had an empty chair around the Thanksgiving dinner table. You had a loss this year or maybe the year before. And that's painful. That's real painful. How do you get through that? How do you discover joy with that? Well, you know, it's a journey. It's a journey. Notice what we see here in uh, Psalm 30, verse 5. It says, crying may last for a night, but joy comes in the morning. Sometimes you cry your way into a place of joy. Sometimes you grieve your way through something and discover joy on the other end of that. Jesus said it like this when he's teaching. He said, you will grieve, but you will, your grief will turn to joy. Now listen, if you're in a place of grieving, God has a promise of joy for you. It may not be right now, but in that journey. And what do you do during that journey? In the journey, you realize God is with me. I'm not doing this alone. God walks with me. And thank the Lord for that. And he sustains us. He puts his angels around us. And then we find ourselves walking into lasting joy. Listen, when you are in a difficult place and you try to get instant joy, you will often make poor choices. You'll make choices where you, they're just dumb. You'll actually be in a worse place after some of these choices. You know, you go back to an addiction. You look for instant gratification in some way. You go back to drugs or some pills or, or all kinds of things, you know, to get an adrenaline rush or just to numb our pain. Or, uh, and, and we end up in a worse place. So don't do that. You walk with God through the journey. And then you discover that God has places of joy waiting for you. So we have shocking truth that joy is here, that joy is sent from God, that joy is a journey, and then also, number four, joy is scary. That's shocking. You wouldn't naturally think joy is scary. Here's what I think of when I think of kind of joy is scary, something that's, you know, kind of a mixture of hey, joy but scary. This is... a. Uh, from Venice. In Venice, they have a, a carnival called the Carnival of Venice. It's annual. It begins, it kind of launches Lent that goes into Easter. And you're expected to wear a costume in a mask similar to this. Now, when I saw this, this is, I, I bought this and when I was in Venice a few years ago, I thought, that's kind of creepy, actually, you know? This is kind of a weird mask. It's not really happy, but it's kind of got a weird, you know, kind of like a scary look to it. So I thought, you know, that's kind of what joy is like, where there's a scary element to it. Because we hold on to things we're hoping will bring us joy. And then in order to get the joy that God offers, we have to let go. We have to, we have to let go of that. And that can, be, that can be very scary. Now, we learn this from a guy named Simeon. Simeon, is, he's got, I guess he's not as well known as the wise men and the shepherds. So he got, he got the shaft on that deal. I'm not sure why. Okay, but he's still part of the Christmas story. Simeon, Simeon's there. He's, he, he actually dedicates Jesus. He recognizes he's the Messiah, even though he's an infant. And then he says this, this prophecy. He kind of says this prayer over him. Notice what it says. Then Simeon blessed him, and he said to Mary, the baby's mother, this child is destined to cause many in Israel to fall. That's an interesting Christmas sentiment, right? whole bunch of you, you're going down. It ain't going good for you. That's what he's saying, right? They're going to fall. He says, but he will be a joy to many others. Simeon is telling the truth. You see, the truth is that when it comes to joy, people, some people, they're on their own little mission, their own little pilgrimage trying to figure it out, not without God. And often they have looked towards places of power and prestige and they miss it then. And that happened. When Jesus came, not everybody got it. You had kings like Herod. They missed it. It wasn't joyful to them. And then when the, some of the religious leaders, like the Pharisees, they missed it. It wasn't joyful for them. But the people that were open, they weren't holding on to something. They got it. 
They got it. They go, hey, this is good news for me that will bring great joy. And that happens today when people try to build their life on something, whether it's education or a family or a business or their career or their whatever it is. And they hope that's going to get it. Now, God wants you to have a good family. He wants you to have a good career and all that. But that's not our source of our joy because that's connect. if you lose that, then you lose your joy. And God doesn't want that. And so joy, we bring joy to that. We bring joy to our career. We bring joy to our relationships and our families. And even if you're in a difficult spot in your family, maybe you have a miserable family, maybe you have a terrible job, you can still have joy in the midst of that. Because it's not connected to your circumstances. You know, it's kind of like that story that you've probably heard. You know, you're hanging on a cliff, you know, on a little branch. You know, it's, and if you let go, you know, it's certain death. And, and that branch is kind of a metaphor for what are you holding on to to try to bring you joy in your life. You know, everybody's got something. What are, you, what are you holding on to? What's that branch for you? And then right next to the branch, a rope comes down. A thick, sturdy rope, and it's Jesus' rope, and he's saying, hey, grab onto that. This will bring you real joy. But it's still scary because you've got to let go, right? You're holding on. You're holding on. Maybe if the stock market just goes up, maybe if, 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 if I have this breakthrough, maybe if this, and you're holding on. But it's scary because you've got to actually let go to grab on to the hope that, and, the, and the joy that God gives you or wants to give you. And so it is scary. You have to step out, say, I'm going to do that. I'm going to try that. So you have to ask, you know, what's, you know, what's your branch? So that's, Simeon teaches us that, that joy can be scary. One last one. And that's joy comes from a difficult decision, a difficult choice. Now, this is a famous sculpture. You may be familiar with it. It's called The Thinker by... Auguste Rodin. There's actually a number of casts that he made, so there's actually a, a number of originals. There's one in D.C., there's one in France, of course, because he was a French artist. But this is the iconic look of somebody who is really thinking. I mean, this guy is soul-searching to the core. Here's what Rodin said about his creation. He said, what makes my thinker think is that he thinks not only with his brain, with his knitted brow, his distended nostrils, his compressed lips, but with every muscle in his arms, back, and legs, with his clenched fist and gripping toes. That's a good description of somebody who's really thinking about stuff. A really a difficult choice. And that's how joy comes. There's a choice to be made. Mary, she's the mother of Jesus. She was filled with joy. In fact, she's so filled with joy, she starts singing. It's one of the recorded songs we have in the Bible. And here's just a portion of it. It says, Mary responded. She's singing now. Oh, how my soul praises the Lord. How my spirit rejoices in God, my Savior. For he took notice of his lowly servant girl. And from now on, all generations will call me blessed. She's singing that out and she's filled with joy. But listen, it didn't start out that way. When she first found out the news that she was going to be a virgin and bring forth the the Christ child, it freaked her out. I mean, it should be. I mean, she was a teenage girl. She's thinking, how is all this going to happen? Notice what it says there. It says, confused and disturbed, Mary tried to think what the angel could mean. Don't be afraid, Mary, the angel told her, for you have found favor with God. But circle those words, confused, disturbed, afraid. You'd feel that way too. If you were a teenage girl and all of a sudden you found out you're, you're, you're a virgin, you're going to give birth to the, the Christ child. You think, well, what are my parents going to say? What about my fiance? This probably is not going to go well, right? I've got, and she's confused. She's disturbed. She's afraid. How did she get from that place to the place where she's singing about her joy? A difficult choice, right? Difficult choice she made. Am I going to trust myself or am I going to trust God? And that's a choice all of us have to make. I don't care if you're new to the whole Christian thing. Maybe you haven't even put your faith in Christ. Or maybe you've, you've been a Christian for 
20, 30 years or longer. Every day, you have to make that choice. And so do I. Will I trust myself or will I trust what God says? Will I trust myself? And that's a choice we all have to make. Now, certainly there's times when that decision is right before us. We have to really ponder and do some soul searching, particularly if you've never put your faith in Christ. That's that very first step where you walk, where you walk across the line with the wise men. You know, the hardest step they had to make with their walking stick was the first step, to pick up their walking stick and take that very first step and say, I'm going to go forward. I'm going to start following this star. I'm going to go where God's leading me to go. I'm going to, and they, they may not even have known there was joy at the other end of that, but they began that walk, that first difficult choice. So I love this statue because it, I think it, it depicts that so well. Jesus is a great illustration of somebody who had to make a difficult choice. He was facing the cross. He was going to die for the, our sins. That's not very much fun. That wasn't going to bring him a lot of joy, but he did it for the joy that was going to come. Notice what Hebrews says. It says, for the joy set before him, he endured the cross, scorning its shame, and sat down at the right hand of the throne of God. He did it because he knew it would bring joy. It would bring joy. So he made that important decision, that difficult decision in the Garden of Gethsemane. I'm going to do it. This will, this will wrought joy in, in, for me and for the people that, you know, that God loves so much. And, that, and so Jesus says this. His, he says this to his disciples. Notice what he says. Talking about making important decisions. He says, I've told you these things. He's talking to his disciples. So that you can have the same joy I have. And so that your joy will be the fullest possible joy. That's God's plan for you. That's his wish. That's his desire that you have joy in the fullest possible way. The fullest possible joy. So how do we get that? Well, we have to realize it begins with us, right? It begins with us. That we don't, we don't go somewhere to get that on vacation. It begins right here. We open ourselves up. We also realize that it's something that God sent. It's a gift he sent. It's Jesus Christ. Good news that brings great joy. If you're in a place of difficulty, where you're grieving, you're in a place of pain, it's a journey. But God promises, he says, yeah, there will be tears at night, but joy, it comes in the morning, right? It comes in the morning. So you just keep walking one step in front of the other, knowing that God is with you. And joy can be scary because you got to look at that branch and say, you know what, I'm done. I'm not going to continue waiting on this branch to bring me joy. Whatever it is, I'm going to grab onto the rope that God offers. I'm going to go there and make that difficult decision, just like Mary did. It looks scary, it's confusing, it's disturbing, all these things. But she said, you know what, I'm going to choose God's will in my life. Because that ultimately will bring a place where I'm singing about joy and how God's using me. There's no greater joy in life knowing that God is using you. And he wants to use you. He's got a plan for you. No matter why you, you've, you're here. I mean, if you're here, if you're still alive, God's still got a plan for you. You might have been told you were an accidental birth. You might have been told all kinds of things, but God knew thousands of years ago you were going to exist. And he put gifts inside you and a plan and a purpose, and he wants you to fulfill that. And you will experience joy when you get on that, on that road. Let's bow our heads and pray. Now, I believe that God spoke and said he has a new hope for some of you, a new joy. You've had glimpses of that. Maybe you had it in different forms, but there's a newness about it. That as you step towards God today, you're going to discover a new joy, a fresh joy. And it really does begin with making it personal. Whether you're here in uh, the, the building or watching online, you're hearing about the good news, the first Christmas, the way those people of the first Christmas, the way they reacted to the, 
to the news of the, the, to the good news. And now it's your turn. You're, you're living in this generation. Your life has value. It's not okay just to just mosey on through and be a meaningless generality. He wants you to be a meaningful specific. Your first step, if you are far from God or you don't know God, Maybe you're far from Jesus. Maybe you've never put your faith in him. That first step is to pick up your walking stick and take that step and say, God, I want to, I want to, I want to follow you. That's what Jesus said. He said, if you want to be his disciple, he says, come and follow me. Not follow some preacher, not some Christian. Come and follow me. So that's what God wants you to do. Isn't this? I'm going to pray with you right now. For you, for you to get closer to God, for you to say yes to God. This is not about saying yes to a church, not joining a church. It's about saying yes to God. Specifically, yes to Jesus. Thank you, Jesus, for providing a way for me to discover my purpose in life. Now, I'm going to pray with you. If you, if, if you can just pray with me right where you're at. Say, Heavenly Father, Thank you for sending your son, Jesus Christ. Lord, thank you for giving me a way to experience the hope and the peace and the joy of the Christmas message. Would you say today, I'm making the step to make it personal. I want to know you. Not just as a distant relative, but I want to know you. You say, God, forgive me for trying to hold on to the branch and do things my own way. Today, I'm going to let go of that. I'm gonna, I want to I try your way. I want to follow you. In Jesus' name, amen. Thanks for tuning in to today's message. If God is impacting your life through this ministry, join us in reaching others by investing today. You can give by texting your donation amount to 757-230-2110 or by going to vineyardchurch.com slash give. Also, don't forget to subscribe to our channel so that you never miss an update. We'll see you next week.